Well, just making a little start on the cylinder tonight. This is a 25mm diameter piece of brass and the scribed line which I've done with a high gauge here is a 30mm, so it's meant to be 30mm long. So I'm just going to turn that little bit down in the lathe and that will be the blank for the cylinder. Now then, here we are set up for milling a flat on the cylinder which will form a face with the um, main standard and where steam ports will meet. Um, this is a 30 millimeter long piece of 25 mil diameter brass for the cylinder as per the plans from Steve's workshop. Um, I redid this because I wasn't happy with my first one that was a bit on the short side so I got another piece of brass which was given to me for nothing which is nice and uh, I'm just set to mill. I might go and have some lunch first and then mill that face. So I need to take off 2.5 millimetres di of diameter, so this plane that I'm milling will be 2.5 millimetres below where the top of the diameter would be now. Um, and the nice thing about this mill is it's got a little built-in height gauge, so it makes it very easy to, to measure that. So, we're going to get milling. Oh, there's a nice flat milled on the cylinder. So that's going to go in the lathe now to drill a, to bore out the to drill and ream the cylinder bore and um, the uh, that will be bored eccentrically to the bar so I'll show you how that's going to happen in a minute. So here as per the plans the cylinder is mounted eccentrically in the lathe. Eccentrically or eccentrically? I don't know. Anyway so it makes the hole off centre so I'm drilling it out in smaller sizes first but it'll be drilled and reamed up to 12 millimetres bore. Um, straightforward drilling operation in the lathe, the only different thing about it is the fact that it's off centre. Nice. So, here's the main form of the cylinder, drilled and reamed. Um, the bore still has to be polished. Uh, the outside of it will need a polish because there's a few marks on it. Um, the face, I think, is not too bad. Um, but it still needs to have various holes drilled in it. But um, I'm going to do the holes for the cylinder cap once I've made the cap, but the other holes I'm going to wait until I've got my, my DRO completely set up and I'm waiting for parts to finish that job. So this the cylinder won't go much further than this now, other than have the cap made and fitted. But, uh, okay, so a bit of progress. So I'm just making the cylinder cap. I'm just in the process of parting it off. And there's the cylinder cap finished. I've just given it a clean up on some fine grit sandpaper um, with a little bit of cutting oil. And uh, that's a, you know, be giving it a, a more uh, finished polish eventually. But for now, this is good enough as a work in progress. And um, there it is in situ on the cylinder. So tomorrow I'll drill the holes in the cap and uh, also in the top of the cylinder and uh, thread them and uh, hopefully have the cylinder cap screwed in and then screwed in place and then move on to something else. Okay, the next stage is drilling clearance holes, three of them, in the cylinder cap and then making three corresponding tapped holes in the cylinder um, and for both well for the first operation I'm using this setup which is my cheapo Dremel copy uh, mounted on a stand and the cylinder cap is held in the four jaw chuck which is mounted on this rotary table with dividing plate so I'll be able to make three nice divisions um, which will then transfer onto the cylinder with transfer punches I'm using tiny little, well, they're, yeah, they're pretty tiny, M2 screws. Fortunately, I had a nice selection of M2 stuff um, left over from another project. And, uh, you know, corresponding taps, drills, little hex keys and all the rest of it. So, very handy for this, just about the right size for this little cylinder.
So now I'm transferring the holes through from the cylinder cap to the cylinder with a 1.6 millimeter drill ready for tapping. I'm going to tap the, tap the first hole and then fix the cylinder so that I can locate the other two holes through the cap. Um, I ended up not using the transfer punches, I just used the, the drill straight through the hole and the straight, straight through the first hole in the cap. So I'm tapping these holes with a piloted spindle held in the mill. Don't want to take any chances with these little delicate taps. So there we are, there's the cylinder with its cap screwed on in place. There's a few marks on the outside of it, the cylinder. Um, these will come out later, I'll decide how to do that, but nothing critical. All good at this stage. The bore obviously needs to be polished as well. And the pivot and the port need to be put into this face. This is a flex hone and I've got a fine one and a coarse one which is already mounted in the lathe and these are bespoke for 12 millimeter bores i.e. the cylinder of this engine. You have to christen the flex hone first with a, a, some any non-ferrous metal about the same diameter for a few seconds just to run it in apparently and then you're good to go as they say. Um, these are not cheap. They're made in USA and imported by a company in England and they are not cheap but I figured that well it was either that or I buy or I start fiddling about with a split dowel and a screw and all the rest of it which I didn't feel confident would give me as good a job and also it's time and sometimes time is more valuable than money so I'm gonna get this going in a minute and then we'll have a look. And that's it really. First 20 seconds or so did smooth it a bit but there's still a way to go. Well the flex one appears to have done its job. Um, you're looking for a 45 degree cross hatch angle and I don't think it's far off that. Um, I'm wondering if the cross hatches are deeper than they should be but um, that's what the Hones did that the guy recommended, so we'll go with it for now and see how it behaves when I make the piston. Good, not bad. So it rocks, man. I've just given the flat of the cylinder, the port face of the cylinder. Um, a bit of a lap with a diamond lap and then some fine grit sandpaper on the surface plate with a bit of oil. Now it doesn't look perfect to me but it seems to be one of these jobs that you can go on and on and on and maybe needlessly. My, it's beyond my experience at this point in time. So rather than keep on and wearing that the um, wear plate on the engine which this will make with thinner and thinner, I'm going to stop and try it. Um, once it runs, if it'll either run or it won't, or it'll either leak steam or it won't, and if it leaks steam, then I'll address that at that point. But I think these are pretty smooth. I mean, you can see it's shiny. There's a few kind of very, very fine kind of abrade, abrasion marks on it, but it's it might well be good enough. I think I'll stop there and we'll see what happens when we try it. Now I'm making the pivot, the cylinder pivot. Um, uh, and it's going to be a composite pivot, which someone uh, showed me how to make. Um, and uh, it'll be easier for me to explain that once I've made the parts, so I'll do that. But uh, right now I'm, I've drilled and I'm now tapping an M4 thread into a piece of 8mm uh, precision ground mild steel as one of the components. And by the way, this is a piloted spindle tap wrench. It slides along a about a, a round uh, kind of mandrel that's held in the tailstock of the, the lathe 
and that way you keep your thread straight. Um, very useful bit of kit, I would highly recommend that you get one if you don't have one already. We're parting off this part of the, the cylinder pivot. So, knurling. I was going to try to knurl the nut for the, that holds the spring that pulls the cylinder onto the port face. Now, or the port block. Now, knurling is something I've hardly ever done. I've got this tool, I've hardly ever used it. I've actually got another one as well, but it doesn't fit unfortunately because it looks better quality. But anyway, um, I've only used this about once or twice before with very meagre results. Um, so, but what I've understood now is you need a bit more time with it, you need oil and you need a bit of pressure and the lathe running at a reasonable speed but not too fast. So I'm going to give it a go. If I can get a decent knurl then I'll do something else with the knob, like maybe cut some grooves in it or something on the rotary dividing plate thing. Good grief. That actually looks something like a knurl. I mean, it's not perfect. You know, it doesn't make me the king of knurling or anything, or even the crown prince of knurling. But it does look like a knurl, especially towards the end of the, the, the bar, when, you know, that's the bit that I'll keep and the rest I can machine off is try and make it a, a bit of an elegant shape, this little nut. So I'm surprised and pleased. As I say, maybe there's room for improvement, but I think it's good enough, and I'm not sure that keeping on with this tool is going to make much difference now. Good. So I'm using this nice little round-nosed form tool just to sculpt this a little bit. Um, yeah, coming on quite nice. Just playing really, you know, not to any particular design, just until it looks nice. Um, and it will be drilled and threaded M4 so that it can screw onto the, the stud. Um, but for, for small parts in, in metals like brass, I mean, your man is click spring. His channel, Chris from Click Spring, he's amazing. He's an, an absolute master. Um, if, you've probably seen him already, but if you haven't, then go to link in description. So now I'm tapping the tapping the nut for the pivot. Uh, coming on quite nice. These piloted spindles are great. Did I say that? Yes, I did. They're um, they're just so handy and so easy to use. Not expensive either. Well, the one thing that everybody says is make sure that the pivot pin is perpendicular to the port face. That's a must, otherwise you can have serious problems with running the engine. And after all this time I don't want to do that. So I obsessed over it with set squares and digital gauges and analogue gauges and finally had to decide that enough was enough. Um, and I think it's okay. Uh, the uh, wiggler is in the chuck and I used the, the DRO to find the centre of the port face. So fingers crossed. Well, disaster-ish. Worst thing that's happened yet with this engine, I think. The hole, I think, is drilled in the right place. But when I was trying to tap it, I stripped out the threads. Okay, so I'm setting up to drill and ream the bore of the cylinder. Now, I'm not doing it in the lathe this time, because what I want to do this time is to leave a little bit more room here for the threaded pivot pin. That was a bit of a tricky one to... That's what caused the problem in the first place with the other cylinder. So I need as much depth here as I can. So what I've decided to do, at the suggestion of a friend, is to shift the the bore as far in that direction as I can. Um, now, I think only about a millimetre can be gained that way, but you know every millimetre counts in a situation like this. So, um, the flat is milled to a certain depth, and that is designed so that when held in the three jaw, 
chuck in the lathe. It sends the the bore of the cylinder a bit in that direction. However, I want it to be even further in that direction, so I can't do that on the three jaw in the lathe, and I don't have a four jaw. So basically, what I'm going to do is I've I've, I've put it in the lathe like this. Um, I found I marked the center with a um, the a, a, the a center drill. Just made a little hole there, which is about just a tiny bit, a couple of millimeters further that way than the actual center of the round bar stock was. So I'm going to pick up that new center with this wiggler and then I'm going to pull the mill table about, well, no, exactly one millimetre back which effectively puts the bore of this one millimetre further over that way than it should be and then I'm going to very carefully have to drill and tap this but we'll come to that after I'm just going to get it set up and then that'll be me for today because it's nice and sunny and I'm thirsty and I'm going to set out in the sun and have a glass of ice cold cider or two um, knowing that I'm all set up ready to go in the morning when I start so far so good. This is the new cylinder and it's been drilled and reamed to 12mm and it seems to me that there's quite a reasonable depth there for me to put a pin in the threaded hole. So hopefully we're on the right track. I uh, have to be careful though because one slip with this and then you have to start again. So well, that's done. It's looking good. You can probably see the little transfer punch mark just to the left of the pivot there. Central, which it should be. So I just need to drill that through and then assemble and see what happens. So I'm using a wiggler to find that punch mark. It's the one with the, the sharp point on it, so I should just locate that punch mark right because I don't want this hole in the wrong place. Um, as for wigglers, center finders, edge finders, I'm a bit vague about all the terminology and I've got a feeling that other people are too, or at least quite a few other people are. Um, yeah, the cheat term wiggler tends to be used interchangeably, but there are certainly different types for finding edges and centres. Maybe I'll need to do a study on it one day. Well, I used the same setup as yesterday for finding the centre of the cylinder face, and um, when I found the hole there, there was a slight movement in the wiggler. I couldn't get it motionless, but uh, I think it's, it's absolutely minimal because the DRO shows me that the uh, y-axis is at the same setting so that should be on center whereas finding the position for the punch mark by turning the flywheel of the engine may not have given me that quite that level of accuracy that, that the wiggler can find but I really don't think it's critical um, this is a 2mm drill here and um, that should more than cover it the difference was absolutely minor um, and also I haven't moved the table so it might pull the drill bit slightly towards the centre. I think it's as near as damn it to the centre and I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just going to drill now. No turning back now. The complete body of the cylinder with the port drill, the pivot hole and a recess um, in, around the pivot to enable the cylinder to bed more. Uh, completely on the the faceplate of the engine. And there's the complete new cylinder assembly with the recess, the cap and composite pivot which means that this bit here um, allows some wiggle room. It can be kind of adjusted or you know uh, set so that it allows a little bit of wiggle room so that if there's any unevenness between the, in the port faces where they meet um, that can be taken up. 